if you want to do the eye blue control mod and know whether or not it's worth it, then watch this video. Now, before we jump into the video, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to check us out on eBay at GameXTC. You'll get valuable information on leveling up your video game hardware and software. If you modded your Dreamcast, then you know you have to remove the four screws located underneath the console. So let's go straight into it and take off the lid. Remove the four screws, detach the wire, and remove the ribbon. As soon as you've removed your controller port, you then need to do some drilling. Now, within the description of this video, I have put down some measurements for guidance. What you'll need here is a five bit drill part, and you wanna make a hole for the iBlue control mod so that the reset button can actually fit in. So let's start drilling. So we've made the hole. It's not exactly pretty, but it's big enough to fit in the reset button of the iBlue control mod. You need to be able to toggle left, toggle right, toggle down and push it in. So it needs to be a big enough circumference for it to fit. To be quite honest, I'm not a fan of the look. And at this point, I really don't think it's worth the effort to actually install this, considering that there's other things that you can buy that are on the market. Once you've made your hole, you can then put together your iBluetooth control mod by just clipping in the ribbons. Once you connect to the ribbons, you can start the installation process. But we're barely two minutes in and we've come across a hurdle, which is you can't install the iBlue control mod if you've got a European Dreamcast and you've got the original PSU. Now, if you've got a Jap console, then the iBlue control mod will fit perfectly fine. So in order to get around this, you need to install a new PSU. Luckily, we had a few Dream PSUs laying around. so. We went ahead and installed it and then finished off the installation. Now, whilst we were actually doing this, a couple of things flowed around in my mind. One, we had to alter the Dreamcast, which I wasn't particularly happy with. Two, we had to install a new PSU, which was an additional cost. And three, there are cheaper Bluetooth devices on the market that do exactly the same thing, which will take half the time to install. When in actual fact, I think they only take seconds. So if you were to ask me, is this module worth it? I don't think it is. Overall, I wasn't impressed. However, let's sync our controller and show you how it works. As this is a dev console, the intro is slightly different. You'll also notice that there's a flashing green LED and controller port one is also flashing blue. This is an indication that it's ready to be paired. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using a PS5 controller. And here, what you want to do is hold down the PS button and the share button at the same time. As soon as the controller turns a solid blue and the green LED turns blue, it's an indication that the controller has been paired. Now that your controller's paired, you can use it and enjoy it. <laughs> 